In this video, I'm going to try to define what the field of information retrieval is all about. Imagine that you have a large repository of documents stored on either a single computer or a bunch of machines. This large repository or body of documents is technically called a corpus. Now suppose that there is a topic about which I desire to get some information. So I'm going to call it my information need. This is the information that I need. And among these documents in the corpus, some of the documents may contain the information that I need. These documents are relevant to me. Why? Because they satisfy my information need. And those are the documents that I'm interested in. But how do I retrieve those documents? I'm going to express my information need in the form of a query and submit that query to these computers which hopefully have some kind of a system that will take my query and return the documents that are relevant to my information need. Now how the query is expressed and the ability of the system to answer my query by returning the relevant information is going to depend on whether the data in the document corpus is structured or unstructured. So let's try to understand what these two terms mean, structured data and unstructured data. Structured data tends to refer to information in the form of tables. For example, here is a table of employee records. You can see that there are three columns in this table and each column has a name, employee, manager and salary. And each row of this table corresponds to one employee record with these three fields or attributes. Now, If you've done a course on database systems, you know that the technical name for such tables is relations. So putting it in another way, structured data tends to refer to information that is stored in relations and a collection of relations is basically a relational database and so structured data tends to refer to information that's stored in relational databases or databases in general. The important point is that this data is explicitly structured in such a way that we know what each of these fields is. We know for example that the salary field is going to be an integer. We know that the manager field is going to be a string. And we know that every string that appears in the manager field will also be appearing in the employee field because all managers are employees. Of course I've shown only three employee records here but this table will in general be very large. And the employee field itself is going to have uh, strings that basically are employee names. So we know what the type of each field is. We will also know what are the what 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 is the range of values that are allowed or disallowed. So there's a lot of explicit structure in a relational database and data that is organized in the form of tables or databases has a clear overt semantic structure and that's what structured data is. Now if your data is structured then you can build a system that can answer 
very expressive queries. Your queries can be fairly complex and sophisticated. For example, think about a query like this. Give me the social security numbers of all the employees who have stayed with the company for more than five years and whose yearly salaries are three standard deviations above the average salary. This is a fairly complex query and in order to answer this query you really need to understand what information there is in your database. And that information is explicitly structured. So the field of database systems is about the processing and utilization uh, of information that is structured. So database systems process or deal with structured data. And when your data is structured, you can have fairly sophisticated queries. Unstructured data, on the other hand, does not have a clear overt semantic structure. The best example of that is free text on a web page. Audio and video content is also unstructured. If you are a blogger and you write blog posts, that kind of data is also unstructured. So think of free text as the canonical example of unstructured data. Now when your data is not organized into a relational database, when it does not have an explicit structure, you don't really know what these different fields, you don't know what the data actually means. If you, if you just see free text on a web page, maybe as a human being you can read that text and understand what it's saying. But how would a computer understand it? It's very hard. So when your data is unstructured, your queries need to be extremely simple for us to be able to build a system to answer such answer the, uh, those queries. For example, with unstructured data, you can have queries of the following sort. Give me all documents that have the keywords, these Romans are crazy. So what you're doing here is you're looking for a phrase match between this query and each of the documents in your corpus and you want to return all those documents which contain this phrase. So what you're doing is a simple phrase match here and contrast that with the fairly sophisticated query here where you really need to understand your data in order to answer this query. Now just as database systems deal with the processing of structured data, information retrieval systems deal with unstructured data. So if your data is unstructured, you will need to build an information retrieval system or an IR system in order to handle these less expressive queries. It's impossible to handle queries like this on unstructured data because you simply won't be able to make the machine understand that free text unless you are able to detect an explicit structure in it. At this point, I would like to say that many of the slides that I'm going to be using are adapted from the Stanford course on information retrieval. cs276.stanford.edu is the website and you can see the slides of uh, Chris Manning and Prabhakar Raghavan who teach that course and they have also authored a textbook on information retrieval called Introduction to Information Retrieval which is going to be uh, the textbook that we will follow for the videos on information retrieval and I would like to acknowledge here the slides that they have put up because I'll be using and adapting them and slightly modifying them for the purpose of this video series. The textbook and the slides are freely available online on their website. Now this slide shows the growing importance of the field of information retrieval 
in the last 10 or 15 years. This slide coupled with the next slide. Back in 1996, if you look at the data volume, that is the amount of data that was there, this bar shows you how much unstructured data there was and this bar shows you how much structured data there was. So you can see that there was a lot more unstructured data or text data out there in 1996 relative to the amount of data that was sitting inside databases. But if you look at the market cap of companies dealing with the processing of that data, you can see that there were, there were hardly any companies making money out of processing unstructured data. There were companies like Oracle, Sybase and so on which were generating a lot of revenue from their database systems which processed this structured data. There was a lot more money in databases than in the processing of unstructured data. But 13 or 14 years later, the scenario is quite different. If you look at the data volume nowadays, the amount of unstructured data has grown even more relative to the amount of structured data. But this time, if you look at the market cap of companies that are processing unstructured data, companies like uh, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, Ask and so on, you can see that there is a huge amount of uh, money being made by processing unstructured data more than the amount of money that people are making out of structured data. So this indicates the growing importance of the field of information retrieval in the industry in the last 10 to 15 years. Now in reality no data is perfectly unstructured or literally unstructured. In reality there is always some kind of structure to even free text. So information retrieval systems really deal not with completely unstructured data but there is always some structure to the data which the IR system is going to exploit. For example, even if you look at this slide, which is written in a, in a very uh, informal language, this slide still has some structure. It has distinctly identified zones, such as this title field over here and the bullet points over here. Even in web pages that have free text, you often have headings, paragraphs and footnotes represented by explicit HTML or XML markup, which, you know, is, is, is some kind of structure. And the more you have structure in your data, the more powerful the queries on it can be. For example, if, if we had a system that understood this minimal distinction between the title field and the, the bullet points, we could answer queries like, give me all the documents in which the title field contains the word data and the bullet points contain the word search. And this slide itself or this document itself would be an example of um, a document that satisfies the query. So we're going to see how to build information, how to actually build information retrieval systems that answer such queries. For now I'm just trying to point out that in reality there is some structure to your data and that structure is, the more structure there is, the more complex your queries can be because the better we can understand data that is structured. Even raw free text for that matter has some linguistic structure in it. So the field of natural language processing or computational linguistics deals with the processing of linguistic information, the automatic exploitation of uh, uh, linguistic information 
in even free text there is some kind of a structure even to free uh, even in free text so real data is semi structured not literally unstructured so when we say unstructured data we we generally mean data that has that is not explicitly structured but it has some structure so it's semi structured so that brings us to the definition of the academic field of information retrieval if you just look at the phrase information retrieval that's a simple sounding phrase so colloquially you can think of looking up your friend's phone number in the telephone diary as a kind of information retrieval because you're you're retrieving that information which is the telephone number from the diary but as an academic field information retrieval means something very specific information retrieval is finding documents of an unstructured nature usually text documents from a corpus of such text documents which satisfy an information need and that is what we saw a few minutes ago you have a large repository of documents which is the corpus a user has an information need some of the documents in the corpus are relevant because they satisfy that information need and an ir system is going to retrieve is going to help retrieve those specific documents that are relevant to that person and we are assuming here that these documents are unstructured or more accurately semi structured 